This week on the show, we are catching up with Arnab Roy, Vice President, Marketing Coca-Cola India and Southwest Asia on their plans for summer and the cricketing season, Coke Studio Bharat and how do they look at revival of Campa Cola. We caught up with Josh Kalmer, Head of Global Public Policy and Government Relations at Zoom and Iravati Damle, Head of Government Relations India, who also spoke to us about their recent conversations with the authorities in the country and some of the best practices that could be replicated to transform India into a digitally empowered society. We have Sujata V. Kumar, Head Marketing India and South Asia Visa, speaking about their recent campaign and marketing strategy going forward. Hello and welcome to Storyboard. I'm Shubani Gharat. This week on the show, we are catching up with Arnab Roy, Vice President, Marketing, Coca-Cola, India and Southwest Asia on their plans for the summer season and the cricketing season. He's also speaking with us about the new avatar for Coke Studio, Coke Studio Bharat and their plans to extend it to different languages and regions. Arnab is also sharing his thoughts on the revival of Campa Cola and he has an interesting take on this. Let's take a look. Arnab, welcome to CNBC TV18. Yeah, hi Shabani, how are you? Always very a pleasure. Well, very well, very well. Other, we are meeting at the onset of the summer season, the, one of the most important seasons for Coca Cola. Uh, if you can share with us what are the plans for the summer and also cricketing season is on. So, what are the plans over there? Yeah, I think uh, I'll just answer by starting that the summer season is important, but it's not just about summer anymore. I think if you've been seeing the quarterly numbers, every quarter is becoming very important for us. Uh, so, that's actually a good sign. But having said that, I think uh, over the next, I would say, two or three months, uh, important. Uh, and uh, we are investing in our key passion points for our sparkling brands. So that's going to, I would say, continue. We are obviously in the IPL quite heavily, uh, partnering with Star Sports there. Uh, there's a lot of activation on the ground um, with assets like Coke Studio. Hmm. There's a lot of activation around our brands, both Maza and Minute Maid Pulpy Orange. So overall, I think it's going to be important. Correct. But still, uh, this is also the time when, uh, you know, uh, companies and brands such as yours, uh, eye the South market uh, very heavily. So what are the plans for the South market? Uh, uh, you know, are, are you going to go all uh, blazing? I think South markets have always been important for us. They will continue, I would say, to be. Uh, we are... Uh, Going heavily, for example, in the state of Tamil Nadu, we have Coke Studio Tamil that's being activated. Uh, we have a partnership with the Chennai Super Kings, which is going to be very important. We are actually, it's probably the first time we are doing a partnership with them. So, so that's going to be an important activation plan overall. Plus, as you are well aware, AP and Telangana are big markets for us. And there, I think uh, we have, I think, strong plans on our two main brands there, Thumbs Up and Sprite. Yes. Uh, Adam, last time we spoke, uh, you mentioned how in the face of, uh, you know, uh, global and inflationary headwinds, you are re-looking at, uh, you know, and uh, uh, reimagining your pack mix. Uh, so how has that worked for the brand so far, for the company so far? And, uh, you know, how have the events of the past one year uh, made you re-evaluate your marketing strategy uh, now or even going forward? First is affordable packs will continue to be very important. Hmm. Because India is still a very price conscious market and affordable price points like the 10 rupee price point or, or the 20 rupee price point, that's going to be important. At a premium, uh, I would say premium price point range, I think there you can you can do some good kind of pack mix interventions and ensure that your overall profit pool, I think, remains at a overall healthy level. So we are continuing that. I think uh, you are you are very much aware the last few quarters have been outstanding. They've been some of the best we've ever had in uh, in our history out here in India. Yes. Uh, and we are looking forward to it. I think there are other challenges that we have internally, which we are trying to overcome. But uh, we, we continue to feel very bullish in spite of all the, uh, I would say, global macro uh, headwinds, which may come may come from the second half. But in India, I think we, we, are, st we are still feeling more bullish. And then there has been a news, of course, there is uh, this news of Campa Cola revival. Uh, do you, as a company, look at it as a threat? And uh, how do you look at this uh, whole revival? This is actually a, one of the best things to happen, Shivani. It's the best things to happen. It's the best thing. Because you, if you have more competition out here, the, the importance of the category, the excitement in the category, hopefully will actually go up. Hmm. And India's per capita is so small that there is an opportunity for a lot of players. Hmm. And overall, at the end of the day, I think we welcome competition. It is going to, I would, I would say, keep us on our toes. 
and overall the per capita of india in terms of sparkling consumption is hopefully going to go up and that's actually good news for a, a lot of our good brands so end of the day you, you know it's important for us that we should not be distracted ensure that our strategies are all in place yeah. and uh, at the end of the day if your brand is healthy and if your brand is is strong there is enough room in india for everybody okay so are you suggesting that aerated cola as a category was stagnating uh, was this excitement needed in the category no it was not in fact the last few years have been very good if mm-hmm. you look at the aerated drinks contrary to a lot of the perception that you are that the media and marketing industry have unfortunately is that this is a you know stagnant category you have the numbers we have been one of the fastest growing you know sub categories in the overall fmcg space but yeah. again as i said the penetration is still so low hmm. it is very important for us to ensure that we have lot many players who can then all of us do the work to go and hopefully break the habits hmm. and then improve the per capita because in the end of the day it will help all of us hmm. got it uh arnab in feb 2023 uh, you know you relaunched coke studio uh, after a gap of 8 years and you also uh, rebranded it to coke studio bharat if you can share with us the thought behind uh, bringing it back to the audience and you know how has it worked for the brand so far coke studio had to come back in india i think it is one of the most powerful assets that we own worldwide music is a one of the most important passion points uh in our core target segment so it for me it had to come back it was a no brainer mm-hmm. i think we needed to identify the right way the right model to come back mm-hmm. we uh, started off actually launching coke studio bangla last year and uh, it was an experiment and the results were very very strong it encouraged all of us to go and expand this further and that's why we also launched coke studio tamil so the second regional coke studio and also coke studio bharat coke studio uh, the bharat idea came actually from a from a conversation with a partners and a producer we are working very closely with ankur tiwari and the insight is very simple um if you if you see what has been happening um thanks to digital in terms of music production in india you have you know the big names but you have a lot of young kids who are coming in from well, from small town india and they're all very good hmm. and it's interesting because even if you look at the indian economy shibani you'll probably agree with this the growth of india is not going to come from the bombays and delhis of the world right. the growth in india whether it's economic growth or cultural growth it's going to come from small town india right and that's where bharat is at its core that's where bharat lives hmm. and we thought it's very interesting out there right and so the whole idea is that most of our singers almost all of them are actually going to be from small towns or or the b uh, or the beta cities and we believe that that the music that they will come is going to be appealing not just in india but actually in the international stage and with coke studio tamil are you also thinking of taking it to more regions across the country as well to uh, you know launch regional specific uh, coke studios india has got so much music diversity across every state that you can have a coke studio actually in every state but the challenge is that where do you have the right infrastructure where you are able to work out the right business model and we were speaking to a lot of out say different music producers i think the coke studio uh, the tamil thing happened for out some multiple reasons but also because of the tamil music industry is very well advanced um and i thought there was a great opportunity out there we have stepped into the new financial year what are the things that excite you uh, in the months to come as a marketer if you were to invest any money in any country in the world over the next 12 to 15 months or even even at a longer frame i think there is no economy as attractive as india if you see all the metrics on whether it's basic economic economic growth the reduction in poverty levels improvement in the in the electrification numbers all of these are very very exciting the amount of investment that's happening in infrastructure finally will impact all of us mm-hmm. so we feel extremely encouraged and bullish by the prospect of india so that's from the from the macro side from the consumer side i think uh, we will continue to see uh, the uh, you know very out say robust consumer spending uh, from all the trends we are seeing uh, and across again most of our operating units i think very clearly the indicators are probably the best in india and the last piece is 
India is the fastest growing digital market in the world, not just in commercial, you know, transactions kind of piece, but even from a content consumer engagement. If you see where the concept of marketing and the marketing model is going to change anywhere in the world, India is probably one of the best places to be in right now. Thank you so much. All the best for that. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Shibani. It is time for a short break. On the other side, we have Josh Kalmer, Head of Global Public Policy and Government Relations at Zoom and Iravati Damle, Head of Government Relations India on the work done towards making Zoom a safer platform, their recent conversations with the authorities in the country and some of the best practices that could be replicated to transform India into a digitally empowered society. Kendra Bank presents Kendra Premium Payroll Account. Free term insurance and instant overdraft facility. Avail unique advantages and benefits. Experience the best. Discover a world of banking possibilities with Kendra Bank API Banking. You deserve the best. Kendra Bank, together we can. This is the highway. My house is my house. That's my house. That's my house. That's my house. Which one? That's the red one. अरे वो सबसे सफेद जिसमें खिड़की है खिड़की तो सब में है वहाँ अरे है ना यार वो कौन सा टाटा ट्रक्स लाए हैं कोलिशन मिटिगेशन सिस्टम ध्यान भटकने और ट्रक के सामने किसी के भी ज्यादा पास आने पर ट्रक की एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजी नियंत्रण लेकर एक्सीडेंट होने से बचा दी है ताकि आप और आपका ट्रक दोनों सेफ रहे अब सेफ्टी होगी और भी ज्यादा टाटा ट्रक्स देश के ट्रक्स कैसे करते हैं ट्रेड ट्राई फाइव पैसा Powerful charts and research tool. One click trade is the new cool. Get access to live market data. Margin funding bhi hai rvi da. Buy paisa app karo karo install. Trading made simple, simple for all. With five paisa's wide range of products. Yaha baha chahe ho jaha. Simply trade on the go. Aise karte hai trade. Soch mat chote, install mar. Investment in securities market are subject to market risk. Read all related documents carefully before investing. Welcome back. Zoom, a platform that we got used to right at the start of the first wave of the global pandemic, is still benefiting from steady demand for its video conferencing service from the ongoing shift to hybrid work models and cost cuts. But many enterprises have moved to other platforms. So are there any tangible plans and programs in works for the company to get back its old enterprise users? What is the work done towards making Zoom a safer platform with increased use of AI and generation? Creative AI. What are the challenges and opportunities? I caught up with Josh Kalmer, head of global public policy and government relations at Zoom, and Iravati Damle, head of government relations India, who also spoke to us about their recent conversation with the authorities in the country and some of the best practices that could be replicated to transform India into a digitally empowered society. Let's take a look. Josh and Iravati, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thanks for having us, Shivani. Thank you. Josh, first, let's speak about your visit to India. What is the purpose of your visit to the country? I'm here in India this week with, I think, two broad purposes. One is uh, to explore how we can continue to deepen our relationship uh, with government entities, with policymakers, with the business community, with the society, in a forward-looking way um, th about you know building business and doing things together. Um, but then the second is to to get people's feedback and understand. I mean, this is a country like a lot of countries that is redefining its relationship with technology as the world is moving so fast technologically. And and policymakers and people have very valid concerns and questions about things like privacy and the role of social media and uh, what's you know happening in the market. And so. I want to make sure that we can provide reassurances, help people understand what kind of company we are and what kind of company we are not, and and reassure people that we're committed to the highest standards of security, of privacy, of safety, and trust, and just make sure they know they've got people they can talk to whenever they have questions uh, about Zoom. Okay, uh, over to you, Iravati. How are individuals using Zoom uh, in India today, and how are enterprises using Zoom in the country? Thanks for that, Shabani. I think we've seen such a proliferation of use cases in the country over the last three years. While everyone started using Zoom in the beginning to uh, just connect with their families around the world, we're seeing 
so much uptake for delivery of e-services within the government of India itself uh, through Zoom. Uh, for instance, a lot of the courts are now enabled uh, in an e-court format through Zoom. Uh, we're seeing and delivering a lot of capacity building within government through the Zoom platform as well. Uh, within enterprises, uh, Zoom is not just a meeting a meeting product or a meeting service, but we're a platform. And within enterprises, we're seeing that this is being used as a collaboration platform across the chat functionality that we provide, uh, the meetings functionality that we provide, the webinar events products that we've also brought to the market. So we're seeing uh, completely different but very new use cases that are coming up in India that uh, that are contributing both to the Digital India program of the government mm. and allowing enterprises to be productive and efficient in their day-to-day -day lives. Okay. Uh, over to you, Josh. Uh, your thoughts on some of the best practices that can be integrated or you know brought into the country uh, for like a more digitally empowered you know India and for a more digitally empowered Indian consumer. One best practice is for policymakers and governments to ensure that how they think about the responsibilities of, of companies such as ours mm. are appropriate for, for the service that, that we provide. We don't put content up, we don't broadcast things. So that's one. I, I think a, another is in the area of hybrid work, in the profound ways that, that the relationship between people and technology are changing with respect to their work days, with respect to healthcare, with respect to education, to imbue policy making with the considerations around that. What does it mean to have a strategy for hybrid work? What are the kinds of investments we need to make in broadband deployment, in digital skilling, in modifying our labor laws to prepare for that future? And so these are the kinds of discussions uh, that we anticipate having this week. Okay, uh, Iravati, over to you. Uh, Zoom is benefiting steadily from, uh, you know, the push towards hybrid uh, working models that many of the organizations uh, are still following. Also, uh, of course, there is concerns around cost and getting employees back into office. Uh, so uh, what is the way forward and what are the best practices in the future that, you know, organizations can opt for when it comes to using this hybrid work model uh, you know, in the months to come or in the years to come? Absolutely. I'd love to share a little bit about a recent research that we've released on mm -hmm. hybrid work and its uptake, especially its relevance for women. And I think the key findings that are coming out from that study is that hybrid work makes more sense for India, apart from the rest of the world, for a lot of unique reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of women prefer hybrid work because it provides flexibility, and it saves people commute times, uh, which is it, it's a it's a necessity in some of our cities. Uh, and so, hybrid work has unique uh, a, a unique relevance to Indian organizations and in India in general, uh, with a with a significant advantage for women who want to either join the workforce or want to continue working uh, in a flexible or a hybrid manner. Um, we're seeing this trend and this preference both on the employee side, where employees within India overwhelmingly prefer a hy hybrid model of working or a flexible model of working. And this is uh, in surveys which have uh, benchmarked other countries as well. At the same time, organizations are rethinking their um, costs, their real estate costs. So there's, there's a thinking about uh, efficiency of the real estate that you inv invest in. And so you're seeing that uh, companies are being deliberate about adopting a hybrid uh, or a flexible working model, both to advantage employees who want that flexibility, but also at the same time to ensure productivity and efficiency uh, for the organization itself. So we see this uh, trend just picking up and increasing in the months and years to come. Uh, over to you, Josh. Uh, when uh, the pandemic happened approximately three years ago, actually, uh, all of us within like a week's time adopted Zoom for our day-to-day -day, uh, like, you know, work and, you know, conducting our meetings. But then over like after the pandemic, a few months later, many of these enterprises, uh, global enterprises, even uh, many of them in India, went over to other platforms of similar nature like WebEx, like Microsoft Teams, uh, what is Zoom's strategy to get back these enterprises to use Zoom for their everyday meetings? 
Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I would say there, there are two basic uh, answers. The, the first is innovate, innovate, innovate. I mean, we win, we succeed, we uh, do well based on the merits of our innovations. And I think, you know, most people uh, agree we have the best product out there. And so we know, number one, is we just need to keep developing world-class technology. Um, the second is that uh, we have to think more expansively about who we are. And that is actually an evolution that's been happening over the last three years as we have moved from being a product, the one we're using now, the Zoom meetings uh, product, into a truly unified, diverse platform that has a uh, chat function that of course has webinars that hopefully over time in India will have a phone service that has a what's called a contact center so that companies can interact with their customers that integrates email and calendar. So again, that the, the, the phrase I used at the beginning, the operating system of your workday can be truly uh, realized. Perfect. Uh, also, over the past uh, couple of months, AI, generative AI has been spoken about extensively. Uh, how are you integrating artificial intelligence into your products and what are the challenges and opportunities there? Yeah, we are ex extremely excited about the opportunities that generative AI and other forms of AI uh, create. We've begun uh, incorporating it into elements of our products, like our we have a, a virtual agent uh, component to our contact center that works on the basis of AI to Im further improve and optimize customer interactions. Um, we have a, a product called Zoom IQ for sales that helps uh, people interacting with their customers understand better uh, how their customers are thinking about their products and services. And we just, we are continuing to try to incorporate it into our product cycles. Uh, at the same time, I think it, it's important to, that companies understand the, the profound responsibility that they have to be responsible and to be ethical and to think about the implications of these technologies that we're only uh, now coming into contact with. And so alongside our really exciting and fast product development, we are building the muscles for that responsibility. We're engaging with partners. I imagine many of our discussions this week will have to do with exactly that. What is, what is, what is the feedback that people and policymakers can give to Zoom about how we can be most thoughtful, most responsible as we kind of move quickly into this new future together? Well, all the best for that. Thank you so much. Thanks, both of you, for joining us today. Thank, Thank you, Shabani. So it's a pleasure. Thank you. It is time for a short break. On the other side, we have Visa Sujata V. Kumar speaking about their new campaign with Vicky Kaushal. Thank you. Zedlak Premium Agarbatti and Dhoop, official prayer partner, Delhi Capitals. गुणवत्ता की बात चली है एक नई शुरुआत मिली है परिवर्तन को गले लगाकर अपनाएंगे रजिस्टर फॉर एमएसएमई सेट सर्टिफिकेशन टुडे Welcome back. Visa has launched a new campaign, Pay Safe with Visa, and it is aimed at highlighting the safety and convenience of card payments in everyday usage. Bollywood actor Vicky Kaushal is the face of this campaign that aims to demonstrate that payments through Visa are ideal option for consumers to pay for any purchase due to layers of security and innovation such as tokenization. To tell us more, we are joined in by Sujata V. Kumar, Head Marketing India and South Asia, Visa. Sujata, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Hi, Shibani. It's lovely to be here. Sujata, if you can share with us, uh, you know, the, <laughs> and the idea behind the Pay Safe with Visa campaign and the objective of this campaign. Thanks, Shibani. We're very excited to be launching our new campaign, Pay Safe with Visa. It goes live on 1st April. And it's basically a campaign that tells consumers how to pay safely on digital payments whether it's through mobile payments, whether it's on face-to-face -face or online payments, the best way to pay with Visa and stay safe. India was largely a cash-based society. And ever since the pandemic, we've seen payments moving from cash to cashless. This is in line with the government's agenda of going digital as well. So from that time at Visa, we've been pushing 
uh, cashless payments, helping consumers move from cash to cashless in the best way, which gives them a lot of security, safety, as well as education on how to do so. We started our first campaign actually in 2020 with a campaign called Cashless Confidence. We've taken it forward all the way. And this year, we're introducing what we call Pay Safe with Visa, which is further taking the agenda forward, focusing on safety as the biggest reason for digital payments. Can you tell us a little bit of, uh, you know, like this entire scale, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, the kind, uh, the kind of frauds that are happening in the country, how big a problem is it? And what are the ways in which you guys are dealing with this issue? Absolutely. So actually, one of the reasons, there are three big reasons for the growth of digital payments. One is it's fast, second, it's convenient, and the third is it's safe. Uh, but you're right, there has been an increase in the number of frauds that are being seen on digital payments. It's something that is being monitored and is being seen as growing. Uh, so at Visa, we've been very conscientious to see how we can make sure all our payments are very safe. There are certain reasons why Visa payments are very safe, and that's what we're talking about in this campaign as well. The first thing, uh, Shivani, is when you make a payment, whether it's online or from your mobile, and we call that a mobile tap to pay, mm -hmm. uh, we have this process called tokenization, which is that none of your details, whether it's your name or your card number, will actually go to the merchant. It gets converted into a token at Visa. So nothing goes to the uh, the merchant and your details are completely safe with you. Okay. So you have to, uh, as you mentioned, this entire digital push, uh, digital payment push by the government, the pandemic uh, has, you know, like these are some of the efforts that has led to like increased in digital transactions over the past uh, couple of years. Uh, if you can share with us, uh, what are your efforts in terms of marketing efforts to build on all of this and take it further ahead? So what we did is, one, is we made our consumers aware of how to move from cash to cashless, educated them on how to do it safely and securely. What we found that there were a lot of people, Shivani, who were living alone who had no idea how to go cashless. So we worked with them closely. Secondly, as you know, we're a B2B2C company, so we don't have customers of our own. So what mm -hmm. we've also done very uh, closely is to work with each of our issuing partners, the banks, Mm -hmm. to make sure that you know the same message is carried out with them to all their customers. So we do this in the form of co-marketing campaigns where we share the reasons to go digital, to make uh, payments with Visa, and how it is the su a very safe way to make the payment. Okay, also uh, interesting uh, way to start April with uh, you know, the cost on uh, UPI transactions. How do you see it impact Visa or will there be an impact at all? So like I said, the move is to get more people from cash to cashless. So I don't think it's going to be an impact. I think it's just getting more and more people to use digital payments. In fact, you can also link your Visa card and use them for UPI transactions as well. So it's not something that we're seeing as an impact. We're actually seeing all as ways to grow uh, digital payments. Okay. Uh, Sushanta, last year we saw, uh, you know, Visa's marketing efforts around the time of the IPL. We saw something around the FIFA World Cup. So which are the kind of properties and opportunities that excite you in terms of marketing in this uh, year? So we'd love to be present at all opportunities that are there. But like you said, Visa is the global sponsor for two big uh, events, which are the Olympics and FIFA. So mm -hmm. we will always be there uh, during this time. But of course, IPL is a big event in the country, uh, and we've launched our ad around this time, so we will be present as well. Uh, we'd like to just be there wherever the consumers are, wherever they're consuming media, whether it's on TV, whether it's on their mobile, through every means, we just like to be there where they are. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. With that, it's a wrap on Storyboard this week. You can catch all of our content on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for watching. We will be back same time next week. See you soon.